Have you been visualizing, affirming, or scripting for a while now? Is your manifestation still not here? When it comes to manifesting, there is this one little thing that most people get wrong, and that's why they struggle to manifest their desires. On the other hand, if you get this one thing right, then you will be able to manifest any desire with ease. So if it's been a while and your desire still hasn't manifested, then watch this video until the end to make sure you're all set up for success. What's up superheroes? Welcome back to my channel, the place where we make the impossible possible. I'm Scarlett Grace from UnseenSeraph.com. I'm a manifestation coach and today's video is all about the number one crucial mistake that is making it so much harder for you to manifest your desires. If you're new here and you want to learn how to manifest any desire fast with the law of attraction and Neville Goddard's teachings, then start now by hitting the subscribe button and the bell icon so that you won't miss any video that could change your life. And if you need some extra help and my personal advice for your situation, email coaching is available. You'll find the links in the description below. I also have a 21-day course on how to manifest your specific person. So if that's what you're looking for, then click the link in the description to check it out. So today I wanted to talk to you about a very crucial mistake I see many people make that is the reason you're not getting the results you desire. In other words, the reason why your desire hasn't manifested yet. If you're one of those people that have been using imagining sessions or scripting or any other technique for a while and you honestly feel that you've been doing everything right but your desire hasn't manifested yet, maybe this is the mistake you're making. It is a very easy mistake to make. And I think it has to do with the fact that many people haven't understood a crucial element of manifesting. So this is not a mistake that you make in the sense that you're using something wrong, that you're doing the technique wrong. It is a mistake in understanding how the techniques work. So what most people seem to believe is that the technique is what you use in order to manifest your desire. In other words, that the power lies with the technique whether that's imagining sessions or scripting. This is not how it works, though. You manifest by becoming the person that already has the desire. In other words, what manifests is living from the end, not the technique itself. Now, when you do an imagining session, you do not do the imagining session with the purpose of getting something, of making something happen in the physical world. You're doing the imagining session in order to get how the version of you that already has that desire, whether that desire is a specific person or money or a better job or a car or whatever, you do the technique in order to step into the shoes of the version of you that already has that desire manifested in their physical reality. When you do an imagining session, that's why you go after the manifestation has happened. For example, if your goal is to manifest a romantic relationship with someone, you go after the point where you first became a couple. You go a few weeks or a few months or a few days or whatever after it is already manifested and you feel how it is to already have this desire to already be in a relationship. Or if you want to manifest a car, your imaginal scene or your scripting session is not about getting the car right now. It's about already having gotten the car, already having the car, maybe for a few months. And you try to figure out how you would feel if you already had that car for three months now. And you embody those feelings. So the technique itself is not used in order to make something happen. The technique is used in order to figure out how it is to live from the end to live from your desire already having manifested. And then when you have used the technique and it's over for today, you've done your session, you continue your day living from the end. So it's not the technique that manifests, it's the living from the end. So the mistake many people make is assume that it is the use of the technique that manifests their desire in the, their physical reality. So they think, oh, my desire hasn't manifested yet, that means I need to do more imagining or I need to do more scripting or I need to do more of whatever method you are trying to use in order to manifest this desire. And you do the technique and then after you've done the technique, you look around at your physical reality and think, 
Maybe now my desire is coming towards me. Maybe now my desire is coming into my life. So where is it? The thing is, if you're looking around, trying to spot your desire appearing, that means that you're not living from the end. Because living from the end means that you already have that desire. So the way to manifest something is to first give it to yourself. This is how the imagining sessions work. That's why you go after it is already manifested, where you have it. The purpose of the imagining session or the scripting or any technique is to give that thing that you desire to manifest in your physical reality to yourself in your imagination. And then all you have to do is continue feeling and going about your day as if you have already this thing because you have given it to yourself in your imagination. So if you give something to yourself in your imagination and continue feeling as if you have it, so live in the end, then it has to appear in your physical reality. So if you've been using all those techniques for a while and it hasn't manifested in your physical reality, chances are it's because you have been assuming that it's the technique, the use of the technique that makes it happen and not the living from the end. So you haven't been living from the end. You have been living in an expectant state where you just expect your desire to eventually manifest. And this is a tricky thing for many people to understand because when you do your imagining session or your scripting session, you feel good afterwards. So you do not understand why your desire hasn't manifested since you have been thinking positive, thinking that it is coming. But it is this way of thinking, it is the thinking that it is coming your way that makes it stay in the future. Because even if you're thinking positive, if your thoughts are geared towards thinking that your desire is now coming and not your desire is already here, then this is not living from the end. Living from the end means it, it is already here. You already got it. Now, many people tell me that the reason it is so difficult to live from the end in that sense, even though they can get to feeling positive about their desire, is because imagination is not real. In other words, they feel that they are pretending that something is real when it is not. But here's the thing. When you do an imagining session, you do not need to bring up all your doubts or all the reasons why you cannot see this thing in your physical reality. All you need to do is immerse yourself in the experience that you already have this thing. Your physical reality doesn't have to support this fact. All you have to do is feel it in your imagination. And this is something that is much easier to do when many people who tell me, well, I cannot do this because imagination is not real. So how can I immerse myself in the feeling of already having something? Well, you actually do that every day. Movies work that way. I mean, when you sit down to watch a movie, you literally know it's not real. You know it is not a real thing. You know that everyone who plays in the movie, they're not a detective, they're not a doctor, they're not whatever they're portraying in that movie or in that TV series. They're literally actors. You know they're actors. You've probably watched other movies or other TV series where the same actor played and they played a completely different part, a completely different character. You know that what you see is not a hospital, for example. You even know that some of the scenes that you watch that appear to be one, one continuous scene may have been shot in three or four different days. You literally know all those things. Yet when we watch a movie, we want to be immersed in it. In other words, for the duration of the movie, you treat what you see as a real story that is actually happening. And that's why if the protagonist gets shot, you feel sad about them. You feel sad for them. When the bad guy has something bad happen to them, you cheer. When the good guy has something good happen to them, then you celebrate with them. You treat them as real people. You treat the story as real. Even though you 100% know that it is fake, you know that it is all made up. And we usually even go as far as creating an environment when we watch a movie that will help in us getting immersed in the movie or the TV series completely. We turn off the lights so that it's only us and the screen. And for the duration of the movie, we feel it is a real thing. And books are an even better example of this. When you read a book, you don't even have the pictures. You don't even hear people talking. It's all words on paper or pixels on your Kindle screen. There's literally nothing there. The whole book takes place in your imagination. You make up the whole story. So in this sense, the book is nothing more than a very extended guided visualization. It just tells you exactly what to imagine. And you enjoy the process and you imagine all those things. And for the duration of reading that chapter or reading that book, this whole story is real. 
You don't sit down to read Harry Potter and think, but this is not real, but magic doesn't exist, but one stone exists, uh, but diagonally doesn't exist. While you're reading the story, you decide to accept it as real for that very moment and to immerse yourself in it so that it feels even more real, even though you know it's a fake story. Why you're doing this? You're doing this because that's the way to enjoy a book. That's the way to enjoy a movie. If you keep telling yourself, those are just actors, uh, this is just a setting, nothing I see is real, this guy is not a doctor, this guy is a Hollywood actor, well, you're not going to enjoy the movie, are you? This is exactly the way you should treat your imaginal sessions. You don't have to tell yourself why this is not so in your physical reality yet, treat it like a movie. So, let's say for example that your name is John and your goal is to manifest becoming a millionaire. Great, so you have created your imaginal scene and think to yourself, okay, uh, let's watch an episode of uh, John the Millionaire and immerse yourself in your imaginal session. See it like a movie, treat it like a movie. Do it because it's fun. I mean, you want this thing to manifest in your life, right? So this means it is something that you would enjoy. So you would enjoy watching a movie and you would also enjoy experiencing yourself being a millionaire. Treat your imaginal session or treat your scripting session as another episode of John the Millionaire or another chapter of the book in the life of John the Millionaire. Don't treat it as something that you need to do in order to force something to happen in the physical world because that's not the purpose of an imaginal session. That's not the purpose of a scripting session. The purpose is to experience the thing. And if you experience the thing every day in your imagination, every day that passes, it makes it more solid and real to you. That's why we bond with our favorite characters in TV series. That's why we bond with characters from our favorite books, because you keep reading about them. And even though we know they're not real people, we have bonded with them. And in our minds, they have become something like real people. They feel like friends we have. We care about them. We care what happens. If something bad happens or if the author uh, stops writing the series, we feel sad because it's like people will know. It's like friends we have. So in the same way, if you keep doing your imagining session or if you keep doing your scripting or if you keep doing whatever method that makes you feel for a moment or for 10 minutes or for 30 minutes that you are this new version of yourself, you are John the Millionaire, you are, I don't know, Mary who has the new car. If you keep imagining that, this is living from the end for the duration of your session and this is fun and you do it because it's fun. You do it to enjoy yourself. You don't do it to force something to happen in the physical world. Something happening in the physical world, the manifestation, is not the goal of the imagining session. The goal is to have fun and the goal is to step into the shoes of the version of you that already has this desire. The something happening in the physical world, in other words, the physical manifestation, is not the goal of the imagining session. It is just a byproduct of it. Because if you stay in the shoes of the version of you that already has this thing, and that's called living from the end, if you live from the end long enough, your physical reality will shift to give you what you have been imagining, what you have been living from the end. This is how it happens. So if you're the kind of person who has been doing everything right for a few months and you don't understand why nothing is shifting in your physical reality, this is probably because you have been expecting that the technique is what creates the change. And it is not. The technique is just something that facilitates you stepping into the shoes of the version of you that already has that thing. In other words, if you do not experience in your imagination having something first, then how would you know how to live from the end? Because to live from the end, you need to be feeling the way you would be feeling if you had that thing. You need to be behaving in the way you would behave if you had that thing. And you need to be, you need to have all your thoughts come from a place of I already have that thing. So if you do not give this thing in your imagination to yourself first, how are you supposed to know how that version of you that already has that thing feels and thinks and reacts about things? That's why you use the technique. You use the technique to map out this version of yourself and then step into their shoes, to map out how John the Millionaire would feel. How would he think? 
How how would John the Millionaire treat paying bills? How would um I don't know Jake married to Susan treat getting a dog? You give all that to yourself and your imagination, so that for the rest of the day after you use the technique, you can ask yourself, okay, so how would John the Millionaire handle this? How would John the Millionaire think about this thing that is happening right now at work? When you ask yourself this question, your brain provides you with an answer, and then. If you start thinking like how your brain thinks that John the millionaire would think, then this is living from the end. And if you keep doing that, then your physical world has to shift and has to reflect that change that happened inside you, which means that your physical world will shift and give you physically the desire you want to manifest. It will manifest physically. So that's how it works. So do your imagining sessions or your scripting sessions, not for the purpose of making something happen in your external world, but just to have fun, just to immerse yourself in that new identity of you already having your desire. And for the rest of the day, live from the end. And if you're still struggling with how to live from the end, then make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon because my next video is going to be exactly on how to ignore your current reality in order to live from the end and manifest faster.